Today I'm taking over the Colts who are my favorite NFL team and starting from this season in the playoffs where I'll be rebuilding them until we win a Super Bowl. The issue though is I normally play NCAA football and I've never rebuilt a team on Madden 24 so it's going to be very hard to win a Super Bowl on the hardest difficulty and I also have to complete these six challenges in the process because if I can't I'll be giving away an NFL jersey to a random commenter and we're starting off with this roster with Anthony Richardson as our main focal point but he is injured and his signed Florida jersey actually sits directly behind me. Anyway besides Kenny Moore and our defensive tackle our defense looks very rough, and I have a lot of work to do if we're going to win a Super Bowl. From what I'm seeing, there is a ton of key players that we have to make sure that we re-sign, and we have to make sure that we keep Michael Pittman Jr., so we're going to go with a player-friendly deal. Apparently, our best receiver doesn't even want to return, though, and with his interest being that low, we're in a ton of trouble. We're also probably not getting Julian Blackman, so we have to get Kenny Moore, and since he's 28, I'd say he has three more good seasons left, so we're going to have him around for a while, and even though we have DeForest Buckner, I want Grover Stewart as well, so our salary cap is already running out, and the next week, Week, we have another opportunity to get Michael Pittman again, so I'm going to extend his time here, and I'm also going to pay him more money. Hopefully, this is enough, and it's not. I also haven't had a chance to scout any of these guys, and I don't really understand what this new scouting system is, so we've got a long way to go, but how are the Cowboys still in the playoffs? This is being filmed after the divisional round, but they still made the Super Bowl, and the Colts had a couple people make the Pro Bowl, like left guard Quentin Nelson and defensive tackle DeForest Buckner. Kenny Moore did as well, and we just re-signed him, but no matter what I offer Michael Pittman, he won't accept, so I'm I'm just gonna go with the very player friendly deal see what happens and that's what he wanted if that's all we have to do we're also gonna keep strong safety julian blackman around because he will be good in the future and just like that he wants to be a colt somehow the cowboys won the super bowl and dak prescott won mvp and i can't believe i'm saying this right now but the menu screens on this game on the ps5 are slower than they are on ncaa football 14. it blows my mind but we have to cut three players so we're just gonna do that and i've discovered skill trees which is a really cool feature that ncaa football 14 does have but in order to unlock more of these, we have to earn some of these franchise points, and I can't believe that we're already accepting quitty pay on a fifth year option. After signing a couple more players, it is time for free agency, and to be honest, this class isn't looking that good, but we have 47 million to spend, so I figure it can't hurt to go after players like Micah Hyde, and I guess we'll find out if he accepts that soon. I'd also love Kyle Duggar, but moving him to middle linebacker to make him my user, and 97 speed Marquise Brown is a Madden cheat code, but I think we're gonna have to overpay if he's gonna join our team. So all around, I don't think free agency is going that that well for us. We haven't gotten anybody yet, and spending over 40 million to bring these four players in makes me want to throw up. It turns out that we were able to land these three players, but we have no depth at wide receiver, so we're going to focus on signing one more guy, and our defense really isn't looking that bad. Paris Campbell, welcome back to Indianapolis. He should accept that, and you might have been a massive bust, buddy, but we really need you. I also get to select players for private workouts, so I'm going to look at people like Roma Dunze, and Georgia tight end Brock Bowers would also be pretty cool alongside Dallas Turner. We're probably going to draft one of those three guys, but we also have to pick at number 14, and all the mock drafts have us picking someone like Braylon Trice. I think we're ready for the NFL draft where Marvin Harrison went at number one, and then Caleb Williams is a Cardinal. Now, unfortunately, the Titans did take Dallas Turner at six, and then the Bears took Brock Bowers at 10, so I'm not sure if anyone that we want is still going to be there. The Raiders are going to go with Cooper DeGene, and we could either take Roma Dunze or Malik Neighbors to help our offense. It's a tough choice, but I loved what I saw when I watched LSU's offense this year, and Malik Neighbors is hidden dev, which means we have no idea if we have drafted a superstar dev yet or not, but I can only hope, and we're gonna start trading some dudes. This guy's 23, but the Bills don't want him, and I'm literally just gonna throw our fourth round pick in, see if that's enough. I hope it is, and we're kinda close. As we continue to draft, that's something to keep in the back of our mind, because I highly doubt any of these guys are also gonna be a 78 overall, and there are a ton of wide receivers that are still on the board. I'm gonna take TJ Tampa, but I might regret this, and there's no telling how good of a player he really is yet. I assume the wide receivers would continue to fall, and Jermaine Burton is a scheme fit for us, so we might might as well just rack up another one. He is a hidden dev. He is 96 acceleration. And whoever made this draft class made him super quick, but Ray Davis just went off the board. And that stinks because I wanted the Kentucky running back, but at this point, everybody we draft isn't going to be a big deal because they're probably just going to have normal development. But we were depleted at wide receiver, so we might as well load up on them. I know we signed Paris Campbell, but Jalen Polk was still here and he is a hidden dev in the fifth round. So I'm doing a better job at drafting wide receivers than the Colts have done in like the last four or five years. And Drake Nugent will also help our team. As a college channel, this was by far the coolest part of this rebuild so far, seeing all these college guys, and it pains me as a Kentucky fan to take Jawar Jordan, but hear me out. The kid is 96 speed, and he ended up being a 72 overall. This draft class all around was pretty good. We got three wide receivers, and Malik Neighbors is a 79. I don't think Alec Pierce and Paris Campbell are going to be on this roster for long, and I love that Madden now has a trade finder tool, because I think it's going to save us a ton of time. The only one we got was this for Juwan Johnson, but I think we should take it, because he'd be an upgrade at 
tight end. And of course, there's a salary cap issue. Due to that, I've been trying to scam our rivals, the Titans, and I think they're about to give us a third round pick, which they do. So I'll take it because we have five wide receivers to develop. And it looks like Jonathan Taylor is going to be a mentor to Jawar Jordan. While there are many camp games that we can play, and that is such a cool feature to have. I'm only going to play one because this is part of my childhood. I used to love these features in Madden, and why on earth are we getting tackled? We need to get some better blocking for Jonathan Taylor, and he is going to see that outer edge. He has gone to the crib. I don't think I'm getting that many points, though. We need some better blocking here, and why does he feel like he's running in slow motion sometimes? I think we're starting to build up some momentum, and now we're cutting it to the outside. Spin inside, and I'm down. I am not going to be good on the sticks the same way I am in NCAA football. This is uncomfortable. But is this really all Madden difficulty? It doesn't feel like it's that hard. He's going to shed that tackle. And I feel like we're able to just run around these players, except I did that. I don't really understand what the difficult part about this is, but evidently it wasn't that easy because I'm about to only get bronze and that is not a good sign. I thought I was doing so well, but that wasn't the case. And I was only halfway to a silver medal. Just to have a little depth, we are picking up Clyde Edwards Hilaire. But besides that move, I think we're ready to sim to the regular season. And it's going to be important that some of our younger guys get minutes. So TJ Tamper is now going to be our third corner and 96 speed Jawar Jordan should be a cheat code as our returner. I'm excited our team overall is now an 83 and it turns out Jonathan Taylor's mentorship went well. I think we'll worry about all our player upgrades at like mid season and I get to choose what stats Quiddy Pay improves on. That's good because the young left end could definitely use it and there's a ton of things that they want me to do before we start this first season. The first thing is our season goal and I'd be very disappointed if we didn't make the playoffs and for whatever reason we're cooking Quiddy Pay right now but apparently it's a good thing because he might be a breakout player and I think the key to us winning this first game versus the Jaguars is our offense. We have good wide receivers, but we also have Anthony Richardson throwing the ball, so we're going to pound the rock if we can. And I'm only going to hop into like two regular season games a year, but I can play all of the postseason ones, and I want us to get off to a good start. To be honest, it's probably not a great thing that I'm playing since I'm not going to be good at defense. We're giving this up. And where is the scoreboard? There's not one. There it goes. It finally shows up. I'm trying to get a sack with Quiddy Pay. We need two of them. T-Law is going to get it out, and it is third down. All we have to do is not give up a touchdown here, but I think we're about to do it. That's a great tackle. Fourth and inches. And if we win the game, it's because of that. We have drove down to the goal line where Anthony Richardson's going to throw it over to downs. And that is the first touchdown of the season. From there, we would simply continue to have success on offense. And it's hard to believe that we won by this much, but maybe our team's going to be really good this year. And Anthony Richardson's the future going 18 for 23 for three touchdowns while Jonathan Taylor rushed in for two. Apparently, Quiddy Pay got his breakout as well, but it just gives him XP. It doesn't make him a superstar. And it's nice to see those stats go up, but I would have loved to see his development increase, and I'll probably overlook a majority of these cutscenes going forward. What I can overlook, though, is all of the skill points that we're accumulating so we can start to build out our coach skill tree, and that is just amazing. We can only hop into one more game this year, though, so we're probably just going to sim to mid-season and then check back in at the end of the year as well. And this is crazy, but seven games into the season, we are the number one team in the country. We also have a two-game lead in our division, which is a big deal, and the only loss we took was on the road at the Packers, but that makes sense because they're pretty good. Now, unfortunately, a missed all the success, there are a ton of players that are starting for us that want to renegotiate their contracts. So we have a lot of these that we have to deal with and we cannot lose out on a player like DeForest Buckner. So I might overpay him, but that's okay. We need him for the next two years, which is also true for center Ryan Kelly. I'm going to give him a player friendly deal and he should accept it, which he does. We'd also re-sign EJ Speed and I love tight end Mo Ali Cox. He used to play basketball, but he simply wants too much money. Zaire Franklin, on the other hand, kind of deserves it. So we're going to give him a three-year deal and he is back, but we're almost out of cap space and I cannot believe how much money we are paying Quentin Nelson. That makes me sick, but nobody's injured yet. So at this rate, we might as well let players continue to develop. And I guess I'll sim until there's only a game or two left in the season. It's time to check the standings and it looks like we are not at the top anymore. Where are we at? Are you kidding me? We missed the playoffs. I thought things were going a little bit too well for us. And I was so confident I sim straight to the playoffs. I could have played that last game where we lost to the Jaguars. And Anthony Richardson threw 17 interceptions this year. He wasn't the best on the ground either, but Jonathan Taylor was going for 21 touchdowns. And receiving wise, why are we even paying Michael Pittman a ton of money? The player it did make sense to pay though was Kyle Duggar as he racked up over 100 tackles at linebacker. And JT's clearly in the running for offensive player of the year. So we'll see if we win that, but we didn't win our division because we lost to the Jaguars. And I was so confident that's the last time I'll make that mistake of simming, but it turns out that Malik Neighbors is not a superstar dev. He's only a star. And with all the upgrades he just got, he's now up to an 81 overall. I don't know how great our future is going to be though because we don't have any cap space left to sign players and I can't believe the Cowboys made the Super Bowl again. It's time to see who won all the yearly awards though and unfortunately offensive player of the year went to Joe Mixon while offensive rookie of the year didn't go to Malik Neighbors but Jaden Daniels. Because we won nothing we've still completed none of these 
challenges. And you know what? I would love to draft a player like Travis Hunter. So I'm going to do everything I can to trade for a top pick. And it's our last chance to resign players. But it looks like we just got a lot of cap space that opened up. So we're gladly going to take that. And hopefully Maddox is back, which he is. The same will go for this guy who we drafted a couple years ago. I just want to have some depth on this team. And going into the offseason, this is what everyone looks like with Jonathan Taylor being an X factor. I'm almost 99% sure he unlocked this this season and I can change his abilities to whatever I want. So he's about to become a monster because some of these abilities are just broken. As for our defense, everybody improved besides EJ Speed who went down by three overalls. And free agency is crazy this year with players like Nick Chubb in it, but they don't want to come to Indianapolis. But maybe this right outside linebacker will and we just need a few mil in cap space. I also have to get the number one pick off of the Browns and we will see if our first this year and our first next year does the trick, but it doesn't. Well, whatever we do, we're not going to be able to pull something off because they're so in the negative with their salary cap, but the Titans aren't and they have the second pick in the draft. So we're going to try to get this. It would hurt me to give up our right tackle, but we cannot afford to keep him around next year anyway. And this is pretty close. Now we'll just throw in a third and a fourth round pick. And please tell me this is good. Come on. I will even sacrifice a second round pick from next year. I just want to be able to have a chance at Travis Hunter. And now we do, but we also have a gaping hole at right tackle to fill. To be honest, we didn't get as much cap room as I would have liked. So we're going after a 72 overall, but we also have the space to go after the linebacker that would elevate our defense to the next level. And we are willing to overpay. As of right now, we are the top offer for both of these guys. And the fact that we got both of them to sign is a massive deal. Now we're ready for the NFL draft, but we have got to figure out how to get the number one pick off of the Browns. It's not that much of a difference, but I think they're going to want a little more. Unfortunately, they're paying Deshaun Watson a ton of money. So I have a feeling they're going to draft Travis Hunter, but they have two good cornerbacks. And you know what? We're just going to risk it. That was the right move as they got Bear Alexander. And I'm not sure if I should have gone all in on getting Travis Hunter here, but he is a generational talent. So I'm expecting he's going to be good on this roster. And Jalen Milrow is on the board right now, but we don't need him. We might need a left end in the future, so we should just take this guy. And once again, it's another player that has a hidden dev. We also have the second pick of the third round because we traded Alec Pierce last year. So we're about to find out if that was worth it, but all I'm seeing on this board is skill positions. So we're going to go for someone like a left guard and I need Emory Jones Jr. to be good. And he has hidden dev, which is exactly what we needed. I got to say, when it comes to drafting, I think I've done a very good job in the rebuild, but I can't hit on every pick. And the fact that my boy Roman Wilson is still sitting here in the second round means we're gonna take him, but why is he from USC? He definitely just won a national championship with Michigan. And at the end of the day, I'm happy with how this turned out. That guard was a 73 and Travis Hunter's a 79. Our DB room on this team continues to get better, but even with all the new additions, our team's still the same overall. And we have some work to do offensively, but only when it comes to how players develop. What's gonna help with that is we have a lot of upgrade points to spend, and we're gonna have some nice boosts to positions like cornerback and quarterback because of this skill tree. Now, one thing I've already noticed is our left tackle does not want to resign with us. So he's been thrown on the trade block and I really would love to get a pass rusher like Derek Brown. We have to get a 90 overall player anyway. So with a first round pick in there, I'm hoping that we can upgrade our defense and that is very close. I've changed it to a first round pick from next year just to see if it makes a difference and it really doesn't. So we'll go with that because I expect us to be good anyway. And I just want to get Derek Brown on this roster, which is going to be official. We might have given up a lot, but we've completed the first challenge of this rebuild and our defensive line looks so much better now with our defense being an 87 overall. However, we might have no money and a terrible offensive line going forward. So I'd love if Michael Pittman Jr. could get us someone like Andrew Thomas, and it's actually close. To be honest, I was kind of just doing that as a joke, but I'll definitely take it if we can make this happen. And we might have like zero picks going forward, but I really want it to go through. And finally, it is going to be official. Before we start the year, the last thing I want to do is swap our pick with the Cardinals because I think we'll be better than them. And I'm honestly hoping it's like a top five pick. So I gave up a little bit more than I should have. But the goal is for us to be good while they're bad. So we're going to shoot for making the playoffs again. And I know the AFC is tough, but our team is up to an 85 overall. So I'm hoping for the best, especially from this defense. And that means the key to victory this year is going to be a strong D. However, things are not going well as approaching our bye week. We have lost four of our first six. And I think we have to have a team bonding retreat. It's going to boost up everybody's morale. But then it hit us with a negative five awareness. Well, it seems like we turned things around after that, winning all of these games. But then we dropped one to the Cardinals. And if we want to sneak into the playoffs, we have to make sure that we win out. But it seems like there's no shot of us winning our division. And Travis Hunter already has four player upgrades that we get to use. As I was going through these, it said an ability was unlocked. So that means he's a superstar X factor. And I've completed another challenge by drafting at least a superstar dev. But I would have never imagined that he would have been this good from the jump. And it's about time to take on the team that's currently supposed to be the one seed. But before we do that, we need to re-sign Quiddy Pay. And we have no cap room. So that's going to be a problem going forward because we can't make an offer. Well, I guess we can say goodbye to all of these guys until maybe the end of the year when we have some cap
tab space free up, and I just noticed this skill tree tab, which would have helped with making some better trades. Well, let's just say all of this would have been very helpful a couple of seasons ago, and at least it seems like we made the right decision in trading for the Cardinals first round pick, and we have some work to do because I believe this is a playoff level roster. At least it looks like Taylor's having a good year again, but he's going to have to help us take down CJ Stroud. And here we are on offense where the Texans are already trying to get in pressure on Anthony Richardson. So I'm going to scramble with him and he goes out of bounds. Just like in the college games, I love running the read option. It's going to work wonders. And that's our game plan to get down the field. JT's going to keep picking up first downs, but he fumbles the ball away. And of course they have Khalil Mack who was able to recover this. This is the most important game of the season and they've already scored a touchdown and then they're going to pick us off in the end zone. I didn't even see him. I'm not sure if me playing has been too helpful, but we should have this vertical up the middle and it's dropped. Luckily for us with two minutes left in the third quarter, we had gotten it back within three points, but Jelani Woods bruised his elbow. And now it is third down where we're going to throw it underneath and that's off target. It is not ideal to have a backup tight end on this big fourth down and it's dropped. So the Texans have stopped us again, but our defense forced a huge turnover. So we have the ball back again and that's going to be caught by Russell. This has been a defensive battle, so we should probably just keep it on the ground. Anthony Richardson's getting some good blocks and he's going to take this to the one the end zone. That is what you want to see out of your franchise QB. And we have the personnel to run a ton of man coverage where I thought we were about to intercept that football. Here on third and six, I'm waiting for the slant underneath, but I've also left it open over the middle. So I cannot believe that CJ Stroud missed that throw. And we just sent the crib at him on fourth down. Even on all Madden, we are able to compete against the Texans, but we have to find a way to pick up this third down and I'm just going to take it to our flat and it's a bad throw. I don't love that we're going to have to get one more stop on defense, especially because I cannot punt. It's going to bounce right into their hands and we're not knocking them over until now. But in order for it to be a third and 16, we have done a great job on defense and that's off target. All we have to do is hold them one final time. We cannot give this up. I'm using that with Travis Hunter. It's over. However, there's a flag and it's on the Texans. So thankfully we can decline it. And I guess we still need one first down to seal the game, which is not going to come easy because that stops the clock. Luckily, we also get to repeat first down, but it's still so frustrating. Good little spin move there. And I just want to secure our win over the Texans, which we should be able to do here because we're punting it back to the Texans with about 15 seconds left. I put it in there so it would take time off the clock and they're also going to attempt to return it. Please tell me they're not going to pull anything off. All right, we're just going to back everybody up, see what CJ Stroud can do. This is it. We can knock the ball down and beat the Texans, which we do. So that is a huge win for the Colts and we still have a shot at making the playoffs. As you can see with three weeks left, we would sneak in, but we could only play one of our final three matchups. So I'm thankful that we won those two because all we have to do now against the Jaguars is win and we're in and they were the team that ruined our playoff hopes last year. So we can't let that happen again and it's going to be tough on the road, but I'm confident that we can come out here and get the win. The only issue is the refs are clearly not on our side. So we've had to battle to stay in this one. And on third down, I'm going to check it down to Jonathan Taylor, but he's dropping it. So we could take our field goal, but I want to go for the touchdown and that's not happening. To be completely honest, I'm not even sure if it helps when I step in. I can't do a thing. That's an inaccurate ball from Anthony Richardson. And we ended up losing this one by 24. All Madden is super difficult to score on, but hopefully we still made the playoff and we didn't. We missed by one game. Our division's also young and talented, so that's not good for the future. And the Cardinals are not here at the bottom of the standings. They finished at 25. So basically, we're not able to re-sign anybody. We couldn't make the playoffs where the Chiefs are in the Super Bowl again. And we definitely didn't have an MVP finalist, but we did win an AFC award as Matt Gay was the best kicker. So we've somehow knocked off another video challenge and it looks like Patrick Mahomes won another Super Bowl. As for our season stats, Anthony Richardson was ninth in the NFL in passing yards, but Jonathan Taylor took a step back having half of the rushing touchdowns he had last season. And look at our top two receivers, Josh Downs and Malik Neighbors, putting up some solid stats. I also have to point out how much better our defense got as Derek Brown and DeForest Buckner combined for over 25 sacks, and Matt Gay being almost perfect is why he won the kicker award. It really bugs me that Quiddy Pay is going to walk, but we just can't sign him. And the same goes for all of these guys, which I've already mentioned, but the biggest bummer is this one. Anthony Richardson doesn't want to be in Indianapolis, so we're going to accept his fifth year option. But if we don't move on from him this year, we're going to get nothing for him. And I don't know what changed, but we now have enough money to sign Quiddy Pay, so we're going back after him. But he's the only player we can afford to target. And I think I'm too worried about being loyal to the current players on this team. That's left us with holes to fill like our tight end position. But what happened to Jonathan Taylor's X Factor? It's just been snatched away from him, but DeForest Buckner got one and Travis Hunter lost his. We also need a free safety, so I'm going to move TJ Tampa there. And after doing that, our defense isn't that bad as it's an 85. But we have one draft pick to work with right now. And I'm going to try to swap Anthony Richardson for Drew Aller, but I highly doubt it's going to work and it won't. Well, it's our turn in the draft now. And this is a generated class where there are two quarterbacks on the board, but there's simply no way I could draft James Van Dyke because this guy is 27 years old. We're literally 
really just going to have to hope that Seth Hoffman is good. He's 22. He's from Utah and he is a hidden dev. I don't know if this is going to be good or not. I made the mistake of trading away all of our picks. So now we're just searching for anything in the sixth round. I highly doubt this guy's going to be any good. And I'll admit this rebuild hasn't gone well, but we drafted a 78 overall and Seth Hoffman might just save this franchise. He's got 96 throw power as a rookie. And it's time to get myself out of this cap mess where I have messed up with Anthony Richardson. We literally cannot afford to trade him. And looking at how some of these contracts are structured like Anthony Thomas's and Derek Brown's, I want to throw up. Somehow we have to re-sign Jonathan Taylor, Josh Downs, Quentin Nelson, Kenny Moore, and even DeForest Buckner all in one season when we can't afford to do this. And I cannot believe I'm about to hit get offers for Jonathan Taylor, but we're going to have to hear some of these teams out. But before we finish the rest of the rebuild, a word from Prize Picks, today's video sponsor. The Super Bowl is now set between the 49ers and the Chiefs, and you got to take advantage of this free square on Prize Picks while pairing it with something else that'll probably hit like Kyle Juszczyk fantasy score. He's literally been crushing this recently, and I'm confident that I'm about to triple my entry fee because I'm coming off one of my best weekends ever on Prize Picks, and my team isn't in the Super Bowl, so this gives me some other things to root for. If you want to join me on Prize Picks, code board or the first link in my description will double your initial deposit up to $100, and they're available in 31 different states, so make sure you play responsibly and let's get back to the rebuild. I think it's time to stack as much draft capital as possible because we can't compete with teams like the 49ers who have this many 90 plus overalls. And I literally just want to get value back for the guy that we drafted, but he's not even worth that now. Maybe Anthony Richardson is, but this could be a very bad move. And I'm not sure I understand the magnitude of what's going to happen the second this goes through, but it's done. We have a $34 million cap penalty this year. And when I say everything is getting blown up, I truthfully mean it. Anybody older is getting replaced by a younger star. And throughout this process, I feel like I'm going a little bit insane, but I'll just sign some free agents to make up for it. And you know what? Even though we lost multiple faces of this franchise, we still have an 84 offense, while our defense is an 85, and it's pretty solid besides our defensive tackles. Now, I had to change Rook's last name to just Horo because Madden wasn't having it, but at least he is superstar. And I forgot that we added Brock Bowers to our offense. It's also important to note that I think our rookie quarterback will do well, and we need to pass for two touchdowns with him, but that's manageable, and this season, I'm just committing to seven wins. I also know that we should probably change up our playbook to something that's not the spread because our rookie QB isn't the fastest and I really hope he can turn things around. So far things have been going pretty well on third down we're just going to throw it over the middle of the field but of course that is when he misses and these field goals are so tough to hit I hope that's down the middle and it is. Well with about four minutes left in this game it's all tied up at 10 we're trying to lead a game winning drive down the field but that's picked and I thought that we had them there but we didn't. Drake May just threw a duck though so we're going to have an opportunity to go down the field and for someone that has not played Madden in years it is so hard to have success. I'm not sure why I thought it was a good idea to put it on all Madden, but I can't do a thing. So it is third down and 10 already. They're sending in rushers and we're going to try to hit our corner route, but Sauce Gardner just read that like a book. It is over. I am so bad on all Madden. Look, I can't even make a tackle on him. I'm legitimately going to have to lab up before my next game against anyone because that's the first pass I've completed in so long. And there's another one. I do a lot better when it's man coverage than when it's zone. I can't hit those windows. And I feel like our offensive line is getting crushed. So we're going to stand tall in the pocket and it's going to be dropped. Third and 10. We know we have the corner route over there, but it is completely boxed up. And this is it. We're going to lose our season opener if we can't pick up this fourth down. But I see Brock Bowers is gone and he's going to take it to the house. I finally feel a little bit better. And if we could force a three and out on the Jets, I would regain so much confidence. But it's already second and short and we are not going to get him. Oh my gosh, he is gone. Brees Hall just took it to the house. It is over. We're not making much progress in this rebuild. And honestly, I feel like we're going backwards. So I was hoping things would get better, but they continue to get worse. Jonathan Taylor's gone. Josh Downs is gone. Kenny Moore doesn't really want to come back. And I have to take my wins in signing players that I really don't want to bad contracts. Deo is a good depth piece and we moved him to defensive tackle. And we could also use the depth from Avante Maddox, but it doesn't make much of a difference. To be honest, Downs isn't that expensive. So I am going to go all in on him. Hopefully this is enough and it is. And then for Kenny Moore and Jonathan Taylor, they're getting traded. Well, I didn't think the Cardinals would accept this the first time. And I could have gotten a lot more for JT, who's been replaced by Jalen Warren. I also just saw Derrick Henry's available, so we're scooping him up, and I have broken the system. I found out that there are teams that actually want the guy that we just signed. We need a cornerback replacement for Kenny Moore, and we are getting close to getting it, but I'm afraid we might have to give up like a second round pick, and at that point, it's probably not even worth it. I don't know how I feel about this, but they do have him signed for five years, and they've already paid out his bonuses, so that's a good trade, but we need to get at least a second pick in return for Kenny Moore, and there are some good offers for the cornerback that's really old. All right, it's time to send it. This worked for Jonathan Taylor, and that's actually close
close for Kenny Moore. So maybe we remove the fourth and fifth rounder and that is going to be even closer. I've added a sixth and seventh on my side and it is still not through, but maybe Xavier Johnson gets the job done and he does. At this rate, I'm just desperate to pick up some players, but why is Will Shipley available in free agency? That's awesome, but so is the fact that we have four first round picks, two second round picks, and three third round picks. So I've gone full Madden rebuild mode. We only have an 81 offense, but I'm hoping if we can start to win, things will turn around for this team. And they're not, as we still haven't won a game. But if Josh Downs gets three touchdowns, his dev trait would increase, but I highly doubt it's happening. And it didn't, as he only had 13 yards. I don't know why I'm even signing Will Shipley to a longer deal, but he could be a starter for a while. And I've just given up on this season. We're simming straight to the playoffs. I think we were the worst team in the league, going 2-15. and 15. And this was not a good rookie season for Seth Hoffman throwing 18 picks, while Will Shipley did decent, I guess, and our receivers weren't anything special. To rack up this many tackles, our defense must have been on the field all the time, and it shouldn't be a surprise that the Cowboys made the Super Bowl again, because Madden's unrealistic, but we obviously didn't have anybody in the MVP race, and I'm ready to get into free agency. I've boosted up more skill trees, so we have a better chance at signing the top-end talent, and they have no interest in re-signing, but we're going to accept Malik Neighbors and Brock Bauer's fifth-year option, so we basically have a year to convince them to stay, and this is what the offense looks like, where Seth Hoffman is only a star dev, and our overall would be higher, but everybody's morale is down because we lost so much, which sucks because then guys like TJ Tampa lose their development trait. If we need anything, it's offensive line, and the top guy available is just that. So I'm willing to give Frank whatever he wants, and I'll sign him for three years. He's either going to go with us or the Vikings, and look at that, we can bring Ryan Kelly back. We could also bring in this solid 28-year-old for only six mil a year, but we didn't get him or Frank Ragnow, only Ryan Kelly and a punter, so I'm going to have to overpay for Taylor Decker. And keep in mind, I still have to work with a $43 million cap penalty this season, so I'm just ready to get into the NFL draft, but we don't have any of our picks because I traded them away. So instead, the Panthers get number one. And to be honest, I don't even know if it's worth it to draft Tim Warner because we could trade this away for a lot more. I'm seeing offers like Stefan Diggs for this pick, so I'm going to have to go through all of these and look for the best thing, where I think it has to be this 23-year-old X-Factor middle linebacker. As a joke, I also threw Kenneth Walker the third in there, who's a 95 overall, and it could go through. And I hope pick 77 is enough to put this over the edge, but it's not. I can't believe I'm giving up multiple third rounders, but we have to make this work. And it's goodbye to Jawar Jordan because this should be enough, and it is. That's only the start of the trades because we still have six picks left in this draft. And to be honest with you, I am just shocked at how much value this first round pick holds. We could pull this trade off. I thought a second rounder might do it for us, but there's still quite a bit left. So I think we're going to have to give up the third as well. And you know what? If we get both of those players, I think this is well worth it. However, I just noticed it said it was declined. So I'm going to remove Julian Blackman and then I have to add more stuff. I feel like I'm giving up a lot, but both of these players are on some good deals. And I don't understand how this is putting them over this salary cap because they have seven mil left and we also have space. I'm literally just going to try to trade for them one at a time. Kyle Hamilton is so close. And if this seventh round pick doesn't do it, if there's some salary cap thing, I'm going to be so frustrated. What is this? I almost had the deal of the century. Now I have to start all over with the Texans and I'm just going to move Derek Stingley around. He's not going to play cornerback for us, but the same type of offer should fly and I want them to take our garbage as well. At this rate, I'm kind of just testing everything out, just seeing what we can do and how is this even in the realm of possibility. It is so close to going through though. I know it has got to be and we've run into the salary cap issue again, but they have enough room. I will adapt and only go after Penny Sewell. He's on a good deal, but I'd imagine it's going to take our 2029 first rounder and the salary cap again. Maybe we could get Chris Olave or something. That would be really cool and this is close. Maybe we say goodbye to TJ Tampa and that's what seals the deal. They seem to be interested. And here we go. We're going to add in the second rounder back and that's a deal. We've got one more first rounder to get rid of. I want Tristan Wirfs and we're going to try to make it happen. I don't like the idea of giving up our first round pick from next year, but it could be worth it. And we're also going to use Julian Blackman to clear some cap space because it's going to go through. And listen, we might be paying over 51 million in cap penalties, but this is also by far the best team we have ever put together with a 92 overall offense offense and an 89 overall defense after I've gotten done moving some players around. Also, it does seem like there is some interest for wide receiver Jermaine Burton. There's a ton of different trade offers if it would ever load. So you all are going to see me go try to find the best one possible. And I don't think the Patriots are going to be any good. So I'm going to try my hardest to get their first rounder where that was definitely enough. I'll just throw in a sixth round pick and that makes it official. We could use some backups as well. So I'm going to bring in some free agents like Rob Havistein and we're ready to start the season where it seems like nobody has a negative morale boost now. So that's that's good, and we better at least make the playoffs. We should have an overall advantage versus everybody that we play, and so far it has really helped to have an actual competent team out there on the field, because I'm 8 for 8 for almost 200 yards, and we 
should punch it in, but they're all over it, so we're just gonna have to go over to Jalen Polk. And don't worry, Chris Olave's only out for the game, so we'll have him back next week, but could we please just get into the end zone? I can't believe I'm playing it this smart and passive, but we have to get a win here. And the loss of Chris Olave has really hurt, but we are getting close to reaching the end zone. So why are we suffering more injuries? And can we please just put this one away here in the fourth quarter where Kenneth Walker goes to the two? So this is now a big third down, and that's gonna be a tutty. From here, we should be able to hold on to win the game, but Justin Herbert got his team a touchdown almost instantly, so we still have to get some first downs. And I think that one's gonna seal it, so we are gonna start 1-0. Seth Hoffman's honestly not the slowest either, and I'm very happy with this result. By week nine, I'm happy to say that we are tied for first place in the NFL. And we did lose to the Jets and the Dolphins after the Chargers game, but we've been on a five-game winning streak where I'm just gonna go ahead and praise Travis Hunter because he's been the key to our defense. And if he can do this versus the Bills, it'll inspire them even more. So we will see what happens, and it looks like we won. However, Travis Hunter couldn't get it done. And the last time we went on a team bonding retreat, it hurt our season, so we're gonna stay grinding. Apparently, Kenneth Walker won Player of the Week versus the Bills with this stat line, and I might as well upgrade all of our players midseason, so I'm hoping by the time we get to the playoffs, we've actually made it. And coming off of the bye week, we lost two straight, then we won two straight, but it seems like we've been struggling, so we better be in the playoff picture, and we're the two seed. However, since the Raiders are 13-3, and three, there's no chance that we can catch up to them, and there's probably quite a few players that I have to work on re-signing, but I did not think about that until this point in the year. The good thing is most of our cap penalty issues are gone, so we're gonna have like 50 mil in cap space to work with, and I really want Derek Brown to come back, but I have a feeling he's just gonna be a bit too expensive. We're gonna try this, but it's still not enough. We could run into the same issue with Jalen Polk, but we've had him for a while now, and I'm just gonna make sure we keep him. But Kyle Duggar might be a different story. He is older, and he is gonna sign back. We ended up beating the Titans in week 18, and I get to talk about my first playoff game where I am going to guarantee the win to the press. Also, it might have taken us a little bit, but the AFC South title is back in the Colts' hands, so that's the fourth of six challenges in this video knocked off. And the AFC was really weak if two, eight, and nine teams were able to make it, but hopefully that makes it easier for us, and it's really easy to re-sign players whenever your team's good. We're coming off of a win where we just beat the Titans, so hopefully we don't lose this. And this first drive has been going well. We have to make sure that we finish it off, though, as Downs is going to come away with that ball, and he makes for a great slot receiver. Once again, we've moved it down the field, and there's no way you're guarding Chris Olave, but unfortunately, it was a bad throw. So I made the right read, but they shouldn't have had him in man-to-man -man coverage, and we are going to go over there, which is only getting a few. I need to get a lot better at this Madden if this is what the new NCAA football game is going to be like, because our team is nine overalls better than the Titans, and I've been able to hold it down defensively, but when it comes to the other side of the ball, I struggle, and there we go, we're getting the sack. I don't know how any of these other playoff games are going to go, but we should be able to close this one out, and I'd hope Kenneth Walker could punch it up the middle, but he's not able to. I've yet to try a strong toss on this game, and this always works in NCAA football. It seems to in Madden 24 too, so we've increased our lead to three possessions, and I'd love to get the two-point conversion as well, which we're going to do. Now, I don't think the shutout's going to happen, but at least we've held the Titans to this point, and it is crazy how well the defense has played. Bryce Young doesn't know where to go. He throws it, and that's a tutty. It's all good, though, because we're still going to get the win, and I'm pretty happy with how Seth Hoffman played, but also Kenneth Walker, who had 27 touches. That also knocks off the win a playoff game challenge, so all we have is one left, and as of right now, we don't have anybody in the MVP race, but it makes sense because Seth Hoffman was 23rd in passing yards in the NFL, and you'd expect Kenneth Walker to potentially be up there with 19 touchdowns, but he is a running back. As for receiving, both Josh Downs and Malik Neighbors have had better seasons in the past than Chris Olave is, but I don't care. All that matters to me is that we keep winning, and we've got the home field advantage versus the Dolphins, but we have to make sure that we make it count. And here on third and 10, a little bit of play action mixed in. It's still man-to-man -man coverage, and that's off target. Then the Dolphins would go down and get a field goal, so that is not good for us. But they seem to love to run man-to-man -man coverage, which I appreciate because it makes it so much easier to throw on them like this. And I am not too happy that we stepped out there, but it should be okay. We've got the corner route here, and that was all clamped. I do feel like I'm getting a little bit better, though. I'm gonna attack this seam right here, and Josh Downs brings it in. Don't worry, I've also been mixing in the run because Kenneth Walker is very, very good. And you all are seeing a ton of this drive where we should be able to go down the field and score a touchdown. To be honest, I'd love to just keep it on the ground if possible. It makes my life easy. And there's Seth Hoffman running it in. We've then gotten them to a third and 14 where they just went with the halfback draw. And that's the same thing teams do on NCAA Football 14. I will never understand it, but you know what? It helps us out. This is man-to-man -man coverage, and that is a perfect throw. But they've been able to strap up on defense. So I'm just thankful that with two minutes left in the second quarter, we have it near the red zone, and it's off target. I feel like I'm playing pretty well, but things just are not going the way we need them to. And the benefit of having a 94 overall wide receiver is you can kind of just beam it at them, and that's what I've been learning, but it's off target again. And I'd say the only reason the Dolphins are still in this is because we have a young quarterback who can't make a throw. It's starting to drive me nuts, but we're using Harold Parkins Jr., and Tua is also off target. So it's nice to know it's not just me struggling.
struggling, but they have forced us to a third and 13 where this throw gets out in time and it's reeled in. My goal in the fourth quarter has been to chew through as much clock as possible, but we cannot take it to the two minute warning and we're just going to go underneath to our slant. This has been a defensive battle and we are just one first down away from being able to seal it, but Miami is not going to make it easy to pick up for us at all. And I really want to go to Brock Bowers on third and eight where he gets separation and this is perfectly placed. That is why we traded for the tight end out of Georgia. And I probably could have gone for the two point conversion, but we'll just hit this extra point with Matt Gay. We're going to have to step up defensively, but if we're able to, that would make all of the difference and this isn't going to be picked off. That is unfortunate here on the next one. They're just going to go underneath. Tyreek Hill catches it and I'm going to miss the tackle and another one. Well, the Dolphins scored pretty quick and let's see what they go with on the two point conversion. We have man to man coverage, but that's not going to stop them from getting in. I'm not going to lie right now. I am pretty sick, but we're just going to attack the sidelines like this. And here on the next play, I want to go over to our corner route where we have a wide open Brock Bowers. Please make this catch. He's going down the sidelines. That's to the 10. I don't know what happened to their coverage there, but I think it is all over and they're definitely going to ice us. So the pressure is on Matt Gay, but this is for a spot in the AFC championship and that is in. I feel like it's so hard to win a Super Bowl, but we are halfway there and Seth Hoffman could have played a little bit better just like Kenneth Walker, but at least we have two receiving targets we can lean on. And it looks like we're hosting again because the Ravens took down the Raiders, but they won the Super Bowl last year. And I don't want to face 99 overall Lamar Jackson. I mean, our team is good and with the morale boost, we have multiple 99s. So we should be able to compete since we are a 93 overall all around. But I just realized I need to add some abilities to some of these players that could really help us like threat detector. I'm also going to use our 300 skill points to upgrade our defense. And we should be a lot better whenever running press man to man now because of these. I guess it's time to see if we can make it to the Super Bowl. And now I'm even more salty about that Ravens trade because there's multiple players on their team we could have had and on third down we had to get it out. I've also made it so I can put hot routes on players like Brock Bowers. That should make offense a lot easier for me. A lot of adjustments just went in before this play and we're going to take our slants all day. I am not messing around in this game. I want the Colts to make the Super Bowl so bad and that's a good start but we are struggling to hold Lamar Jackson. They go with the halfback screen. We should have gotten over to it and we did. I refuse to believe Justin Tucker is still in the league hitting kicks. So I don't think that was him and it's very obvious that they are blitzing us on third down so we get it out quick and I cannot believe that I didn't have threat protector on Tristan Wirf sooner. That's a dot. Can we talk about what a catch that was from Chris Alave? That was put right on the money and he just reeled it in. So I'm pumped up with how we're playing right now. And here on third down, Lamar throws it on the run. We knock it down. I know he's wearing number 35, which is very weird, but Travis Hunter did clamp up there. And that could have been an interception that just changed everything. So that was almost really bad. And on third down, if we pick this up, that'd be awesome. Right now I'm lasering versus the Ravens, but I had no time. And I think we're just going to take it to the half unless we get a big gain here, which is something that's happening. Now we have to take this drive a little bit more seriously, hopefully getting out of bounds with Brock Bowers, but we didn't. So we're going to take a couple shots to the end zone. We have Chris Alave, but it's way off target. That was it. It would have been 21 to three. Now we're just trying to fit it in the tight windows. That's stupid. We could have gotten at least a field goal there, but I just ended up being dumb. So it's a good thing that the third quarter went well for us where we weren't able to score, but we are very close to doing so here. And the power run worked for our first touchdown. So I'm expecting it to again. And that's what it does. Kenneth Walker gets himself another, but the Ravens scored two touchdowns pretty quickly. And we find ourselves in a situation where we need to pick this play up. We're going to get picked off. Okay. All of a sudden this game is not looking good for us. It is going to be 18 21. And you might be wondering how I choke this bad. Trust me. I am wondering the same thing. It all happens so quick. And this is play action, which means we are all over that. That's a user pick for me. So I've clutched up with Harold Perkins Jr. And the linebacker out of LSU is just completely awesome. One first down will do it. And we deserve to win this so, so bad. And that's what's happening. The Colts are headed to the Super Bowl now. And it wasn't a pretty game from Seth Hoffman, but I don't care because we won either way. It looks like we're going to be facing the Falcons who've somehow made it. And I guess they're good five years into the future because they have the best record in the NFL. When it comes to yearly awards, we did not have anybody in the MVP race though. So if we win a Super Bowl, we're not going to complete all six of these challenges. But Kenneth Walker did win Offensive Player of the Year along with Best Halfback, so he should have been in it. That gets him another upgrade before the big game. So we're going to take that because it'll make his stats even better than they already are. And these are literally insane. I can't believe how many 99s there are. As for Super Bowl Media Day, obviously this is just the beginning of the Colts domination. And I see no reason why we wouldn't insult our opponents as well. They're simply not as good as the couch quarterbacks say. But then I went to look at their roster and they have 399 overalls with a lot of other really good guys. Desmond Ritter's also an 86 and they're an 87 overall team so we need to play well. I also just realized this team went 2-15 and last year and now we find ourselves playing for a Super Bowl. That is insane and so far this first drive is going pretty well. But in order to finish it off we still got some work to do against the Falcons. And here on third down I'm probably just going to stare down 
around Brock Bowers. They're all over him. Why would I even throw it at that defender? I am literally so stupid. At least we can just knock him over. But the Falcons would score instantly from that, and to be honest, they completely deserve it. Now I just have to hope that this is press man-to-man, -man, and it is, so Chris Olave should be gone to the crib, but they keep up with him. And I am struggling. It is now third down where there just wasn't enough time. I gotta say, Madden is so much harder than NCAA football is, but I'm just not used to it. And I really want to stop them on this third and short, but they're just going to pass for another. Luckily, by the third quarter, they're only up by seven, but we have got to start making plays, and this is an opportunity to with a beautiful throw. Now on this next play, they're pressing Chris Olave, and this is the time that he's going to beat that corner. So all of a sudden, it is 17 all, and what an amazing catch he just made there. We needed that so bad. Here on third and 13, they're just going to go with the screenplay, and don't tell me they're about to pick this one up on us. He broke that tackle. Come on. It's literally been back and forth like this all day. But again, we have forced them to a third and long. All we have to do is make sure they don't pick this up. It's a check down and we just got to hit him. There's no way that they're in field goal range. And if they hit a 61 yarder on us, that would be the dumbest thing ever. All right, Carlson missed. I don't know why they don't have Young Way Koo anymore. But with five and a half minutes left, all we have to do is now get some points. And that bluff blitz really fooled me. I legit blocked like everybody there just for them to barely send any players. Now we're going to throw this late and look at that. Brock Bowers is open. I have learned from my first pick to open up this game. I'm being a lot more patient and I keep forgetting to mix in a little bit of running as well because that can always go well for us as it's now third and two. They're blitzing and Brock Bowers holds on. We just need like five more yards versus this defense. We should get it here, but that ball did not go where I thought it would and with the halfback screen, Kenneth Walker comes away with it. He's got one guy to beat. He's going to break that tackle. He's in. A Super Bowl is starting to feel a lot closer and let's see what Desmond Ritter can do. Can we lock him up? They're just going underneath. So it's third down and eight. Harold Perkins Jr. watching over the middle of the field, but we didn't see that one. I do not like how they have the ball right now. I don't want them to be able to score points on us. We need to hit them hard. And there's only two minutes left, so I'm sure they're going to be pretty smart about clock management, but they might not leave us much time if they reach the end zone. And it's time to run some press man-to-man -man coverage. We put points into our skill trees just for this, where it looked pretty solid there. Now it's third down and we're all over it. They have hurried it up though. We did not have much time to set up our defense. I see somebody open. They check it down and there's a minute left on the clock where they have all three of their timeouts, but we could still run it out. And all we have to do is pick up a first down, but that was a rough loss to take there. And look at Kenneth Walker. Third and inches for the Super Bowl. I hope this motion throws them off. We're going to go down the middle and he's going to pick it up. We have completed the rebuild and we literally went two and 15 last year. I did not expect us to win it all this season. And I also thought we'd have Anthony Richardson on the roster, but Seth Hoffman has changed everything as the Colts have finally won another Super Bowl. And I'd like to think that this is just the start of their dynasty, but it is the end of the rebuild for me where I couldn't complete all six of these challenges. So I'll be giving away an NFL jersey to a random commenter. And I got to take one last look at this roster with all of our final upgrades on it because this was a special team and I feel like I did a pretty good job compiling it. So I've gotten my Colts a Super Bowl in Madden 24 and I'll see you all in the next NCAA football rebuild.